It's a beautiful set. <laughs> Hold on. Right on. Oh God, hold on, it's salvageable. This is why you want a boiling baked pie. Hey everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my kitchen in my cabin in the Hudson Valley. And today I am showing you perhaps the most classic American dessert, one of the greatest desserts of all time. Perfect for Thanksgiving, but also any time of the year. It is my old fashioned apple pie with a crumble topping. I, okay, I love pumpkin pie. We have a pumpkin pie episode coming up soon, right? It already passed. <laughs> we have a pumpkin pie episode that you've already seen. Pumpkin pie is one of those things where like you kind of only eat it at Thanksgiving and even though it's a great dessert and you should have it more often, for six months out of the year, apple pie is a dessert that I want to eat. It's just, it's more versatile. It's a fruit-based dessert and apples are like really truly my favorite baking fruit. If I have to choose one Thanksgiving dessert, it is going to be an apple dessert. I live in the Northeast. There are so many amazing kinds of apples and it's so versatile and you get such incredible flavor from an apple. So that is my like one dessert for Thanksgiving for sure. When I think of a classic apple pie, I often think of a double crust pie, but instead of a top crust, this pie has an oat crumble topping, which I really like because one, it kind of gives me the best of both worlds with like pie crust and apple crisp kind of together. And also it doesn't require you to do sort of the more elaborate pie assembly that a top crust or a lattice requires. So it's just really easy and I think really delicious. So I have a couple of different components. I have the filling, the crust, and then the crumble. In terms of special equipment, you'll need a rolling pin, a vegetable peeler for the apples, and a standard pie plate. This will work in a nine or a 10 inch. In a nine inch, you'll have something a little more domed. In a 10 inch, you'll have something a little bit more low profile. So I have ingredients separated out for the crumble and the filling, but a lot of them are the same. I'm using brown sugar, cornstarch, butter, a little kosher salt, cinnamon, apple cider vinegar, and Granny Smith apples. That is for the filling. Then I have one portion of my all-purpose flaky pastry from Dessert Person already put together. This is for the bottom crust. I'm gonna use it to make a nice sort of wavy edge. For the crumble, I have unsalted butter, cinnamon, all-purpose flour, oats, I'm using old fashioned rolled oats, don't use quick cooking, light brown sugar, and a little bit of salt. Okay, so before we get too deep into the episode, I wanna thank our sponsor, Maiden. You may have noticed the pie plate that I'm using. It is part of Maiden's bakeware line. It's their newest item. All of their bakeware is made from porcelain, manufactured by French craftsmen who have been perfecting their technique for over two centuries. Porcelain is great to bake in. It's naturally non-stick. It is oven safe up to 650 degrees. And I love it because it's microwave safe. You can go from the freezer to the oven to the table. And it looks so beautiful. They don't just make pie plates. Maiden also has a 13 by nine baking dish, an eight by eight baking dish, and an oval baking dish for all of your sweet and savory baking needs. They don't just make bakery either. There is a line of stainless steel cookware, I'm really excited about the carbon steel pans that they make, plus glassware, plus knives. They really do it all. So for the next 30 days, you can go to madeincookware.com backslash Claire. So check out all their amazing products. I'm very excited to do lots of baking this fall and winter in all of their bakeware. So check it out and let's get back to the pie. So I have 10 tablespoons of unsalted butter that I cut into pieces and this is cold or at least it was cold when I pulled it out of the fridge like 15 minutes ago. Then I have a cup of all-purpose flour. And you often see like different pr proportions for a crumble topping with oats. Sometimes you see more oats than flour. Sometimes it's more flour than oats. I kind of go one-to-one -one by volume. So a cup of rolled oats. Again, these are old-fashioned rolled oats, not quick cooking. The quick cooking ones just like break down and get kind of mushy. I want to have texture in the oats. This is a half cup of packed light brown sugar, you could use dark brown. To me, it's like a crumble has to have brown sugar and it has to have oats. This is a half teaspoon of kosher salt. And then I'm adding some cinnamon. You could do any warm spice that you like. There's this thing, I have sort of like a push-pull sort of thinking around cinnamon and apples. Of course, it's a natural pairing and they go so well together, but not every apple dessert needs cinnamon. 
but an apple pie needs cinnamon. So I'm gonna do a teaspoon. This is really easy. You could do this with kids because all you do is combine this mixture with your hands. And once you get it sort of mixed and the butter piece is coated, you can start to smash the butter into the dry mix. So I'm just doing this like pinching motion to bring all of this together. And it's done when I have no visible pieces of butter and the mixture has no floury areas left and it holds together when I squeeze it. If you're working with room temp butter, it might get a little bit sticky. So you can throw it back into the fridge. But this looks great. You have sort of these classic looking, not too dry, not too wet, little oat crumbles. This is from Dessert Person. This is just, it's, I call it all purpose crumble topping. You can put it on any pie on top of like any coffee cake as sort of a streusel. All right, this is gonna go into the fridge and then I'm gonna pivot to my apple filling. So I have three pounds of Granny Smith apples here. To me, Granny Smith is a great go-to baking apple because they're very firm and very tart. And so I always like to bake with a tart apple. I think that tart apples just make for a better balance in pie filling. So I'm gonna start by peeling all my apples. And one tip is rather than peel and slice one at a time, peel them all, slice them all. It's just more efficient. And while I'm peeling the apples, I'll tell you about my cabin and give you an update. Yeah, where are we? So we're in the Hudson Valley in this cabin that my husband and I bought a little over a year ago. One of the first things we did was rip out the kitchen, which just needed lots of updating. And so far, we haven't replaced it yet. It's a work in progress, but we sp spend a good amount of time here and still manage to cook in this kitchen. Like we have working appliances. It's just a matter of cabinets and, you know, having a place to put everything, but it doesn't stop us or me from baking or making great food. So it's a little challenging but I'm happy to be up here, especially this time of year, which is just like so beautiful with the leaves and I really enjoy the kind of turn to cooler weather. So thanks for joining us. One thing I really like about baking up here, especially fruit baking, is that we have a compost like thing that we turn and a little compost pail. So I feel a lot better about like all the scraps that I have, all the peel from the apples and we have chickens and like they love this. So a lot of fun to be able to bake and not have really any waste. We have seven chickens now and they all get along just fine. The scraps go into the pail for the chickens. I cut just off to the side so that I'm cutting down next to the core. Then I lay it on the cut side and continue to cut down and around the core on four sides. Ooh, what a sweet <laughs> noise this <Rubber> makes. <laughs> About half inch slices or so. So just like that, no thinner. Now to this, I'm gonna add my remaining filling ingredients. I'm using all light brown sugar. I've come to see all the benefits of a very simple apple pie that let the apples kind of speak for themselves. So while you could do a variety of warm spices, you could add a little cardamom, you could add some clove, all that. I think just cinnamon is kind of all it really needs to shine. So I'm adding two teaspoons of ground cinnamon and a little bit of kosher salt. Then three tablespoons of cornstarch. This is the thickener for the pie. Then I didn't call this out in the beginning as an ingredient, but I'm gonna add a little vanilla. You could add like a little bit of rum, some kind of little flavoring agent of your choice. And then for a little bit of extra complexity, I'm adding two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. I always really like to use like whatever the star ingredient is, I like to use it in as many forms as possible. So when it comes to adding an acid, why not do apple cider vinegar? For your apple tart, a lot of people say that they use apple cider vinegar. That recipe starts with two cups of apple cider. Oh. There's no way that that's right, that that happened. I don't I don't believe it. No way. So toss until everything is well coated. I look better now that they're coated in some brown sugar so you can't see the, the natural brown spots. It's like not a big deal in a baking thing. No. The last thing is we are going to line our pie plate with our pie dough. So I'm gonna grab a little flour and my rolling pin. This is one portion of my flaky my, what, is it, what do we call it? My all-purpose flaky pie dough, pie crust, pastry crust. This is the recipe from dessert person for pie crust. So I'm gonna give it 
a little bit of flour. This is gonna get a little loud because I'm not exactly working on a super sturdy work table, but I'm gonna do a little bit of thwacking of the dough just to soften the butter a little bit and get it pliable. I basically thwack it into a square first, and then once it's a square, I can have, I have an easier time getting it into a circle. And if you get a little cracking around the edge, just pinch it back together. After just like lots of rotating of the crust and kind of rolling it in all directions, it really does start to work itself into a circle. So I have enough clearance for my crust to line the pie plate. This crust is well chilled. It's still cold. It's not sticky or delicate or anything. So I can very easily lift this and place it on my pie plate. You can roll the crust onto your rolling pin and then unroll it onto your plate. You can just lift it, you can fold it. So once you have it in your plate, go ahead and sort of pull the ends inward. And that is gonna help to allow the crust to slump and not stretch itself into the bottom of the plate. You don't wanna stretch the dough really. You wanna let it naturally fall into the contours of the plate. And once you have it in the bottom, press really firmly all the way around and especially press it into that little area where the nook where the side meets the bottom of the plate. And you always wanna make sure that you center the crust so that you have pretty much the same overhang all the way around. I'll grab a pair of scissors and just trim any areas where the overhang is a little bit longer than it is in other spots. But actually it's pretty even. And now what I'm gonna do is take the overhang and just tuck it underneath. And that's gonna make a lip all the way around the edge of the pie plate where the dough is sort of a double thickness. So just go ahead and tuck. You want the edge of the pie dough to be sort of resting just inside the lip of the plate. And the purpose of this is to really anchor the crust to the side of the pie plate. And also it's gonna give you a little bit of like extra dough to make a decorative edge. Okay, so now once you have everything tucked underneath, I like to go back around kind of using the flat side of my hand and I just firmly press the dough back against the side. If at any point it feels like it's getting sticky, it's sticking to your hands, you need extra flour, you can pop it into the fridge or the freezer briefly because cold pie dough is always easier to work with. So I like to go in with my thumb on one hand and then my thumb and forefinger on the other. So I press toward the center of the pie plate with my thumb and then toward the lip with my other two fingers. I went back around with my thumb and just made sure that everywhere I had a sort of a wave that I was really firmly pressing the dough against the lip of the pie plate. That's gonna help to prevent it from shrinking and help it hold its shape because I want the pie to have like a lot of this definition that it has going into the oven coming out. This crust is still cold. I'm gonna go ahead and fill the pie, get it into the oven because all I have to do is put the apples in and put the crumble on top. So my apples have begun to release some of their juices. That is great. All of that juice can go right in because I know that they'll thicken because of that cornstarch. So I'm gonna take some of the slices and just line them into the bottom of the pie plate, right around that area where the side meets the bottom. Because sometimes if you just dump all the slices in, especially like chunkier slices like this, you won't get anything in that area and then you cut a slice and there's like a big gap. I wanna prevent that from happening. I'm just pushing in some slices into that area. Okay, and then you can go ahead and just scrape in the rest. So scrape in all of the sugar, anything, all the juices on the bottom of the bowl. Okay, that looks fantastic. This is a step I forget every time I make apple pie. And it's kind of like an old fashioned step. Like I remember, hearing my mom, you know, reading this step when she was making pie for Thanksgiving, it's you dot the pie with butter, just meaning like you put bits of butter on top of the fruit and it settles down and bakes and makes this rich filling. So I have these, this two tablespoons of butter that I cut up into pieces and I'm just tucking it into the slices. Final step, putting the crumble on top. And then I have my oven preheated to 400 and a baking sheet at the ready because we're going to bake it on a baking sheet and then we're going to bake. How's this fridge compared to your house? This fridge, 
This fridge has seen some stuff. This fridge is still working. I appreciate this fridge, but like, it's scary in there. Don't look too close. Just all you do is pile this on top and like the, there's no wrong way to do it. And I think actually when you press the crumble like this, it does help to form a bit of a more solid lid that will then be easier to slice and to get a nice even wedge out of the pie. Cause obviously the crumble can be just a little bit messy when you cut it. I'm not doing an egg wash across the crimp. I just feel like it's an extra step that this doesn't need. Often you're using an egg wash because you are trying to seal the top crust to the bottom crust. And I don't need to do that here. So I just didn't think it was worth it to beat an egg just to get a little bit of a golden edge. Like this pie will bake up golden and beautiful. Just won't be as glossy. So in the spirit of Thanksgiving, we're gonna bake this pie today, but wait overnight and cut it in tomorrow after it's fully cooled and we'll get this beautiful slice of apples and the crumble. So I'm gonna pop it in the oven. I have it at 400. Actually, I'm always baking my pies overnight. Not overnight, the night before. <laughs> I don't bake them that long. So I have it at 400 and I like that blast of heat in the very beginning to help set the edge of that crust. And then I'm gonna turn it down after about 20 minutes to 350 and it's gonna go until I see juices bubbling around the edge and the crumble is golden brown. If you feel like the crumble is getting a little bit dark before you see juices bubbling, you can put a little piece of foil right on top to prevent further browning. But it'll go probably all in about an hour, hour and a half. So here's our pie. It's fully cooled because we baked it last night. It went for about 20 minutes at 400 and then for another hour at 350. And I pulled it just when I saw bubbling apple juices right along the border. So in that little sort of crevices of the crimp and it's super golden brown. I love seeing the blistering along the crimp where I know that the crust puffed and it's gonna be really flaky and delicious. So I always bake my Thanksgiving pies the night before to free up the oven for the day of. So pie keeps for a long time and now I know it's fully set and I can get a beautiful, nice slice out of the pie. So we're gonna cut into it. The crumble topping has sort of baked and fused together into this really crunchy lid. I'm super excited about it. So I'm using a serrated knife. I can just tell from the way it's cutting that I'm gonna get a nice slice. So make sure you're cutting all the way to the bottom. The first slice is always the hardest one to cut out. One tip that I have is if you don't feel like you can get a clean slice out, cut two slices. And then that often makes it a little easier to lift out the first. So you can use a pie server. I just have a little offset spatula here. You wanna get under it. I always like to bake my pie very well, meaning lots of color, lots of browning on the top, juicy, not dry, but not too much liquid. This is why I love having those thicker slices of apples because you get just so much more texture and they've become translucent. That's always how I want my apples to be cooked. I want them to be soft and translucent, crunchy oat topping. Also not too much cinnamon. I don't think you need to overwhelm an apple pie with a ton of cinnamon or warm spices, but I would like to eat this now. Mm -hmm. So the apples are cooked through, like I can easily, they're fork tender, but they're not mush. So I have a good feeling about this. Mm. This is like the dessert equivalent of like a hug. Comforting, the like cinnamon, the oats. It's very homey, very kind of old fashioned, but I think the more that I make pie, the more that I realize that I don't want something like really elaborate. Just keep it simple. Practice sound pastry technique when you're making the crust. Let the fruit be the star, and I promise you'll have like a delicious pie on your table for Thanksgiving or really any time of the year. So, I hope you try this one. Thank you for coming to the cabin. We have more episodes from here to bring you. And I wanna say thanks to our sponsor, Made In, and thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.